Welcome back, folks. Our second hour, we have Penny Hargraves, our Christchurch resident, uh, who blow in the whistle on the electromagnetic frequencies to surround her in Christchurch. Welcome back, Penny. Nice to have you. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for all the interesting back chat related to my previous uh, rather long interview. Uh, we were worried that there was going to be a well, it was predicted there was going to be a huge quake and tidal wave in Christchurch at the end of September, and luckily it didn't eventuate. Um, it would be interesting to know if it didn't eventuate, because at the time a leaflet drop was made by a church group who were predicting uh, that many areas were going to be covered by a tidal wave, mm. and there was a lot of furor about that. But um, it's also interesting that after the chem drop was made, warning people to keep away from the coastal parts they thought the quake, the tidal wave was going to come, that the chemtrails um, actually stopped for that week and I pick up very high, unfortunately I'm very allergic to radio frequency emissions and I felt all over the city that they'd actually been turned down and there seems to be quite a connection with um, triggering off quakes when the frequencies are higher and the chemtrail, chemtrails are busy. We certainly saw that, didn't we, Penny? Because it was the same here. We had these apparently, and I say apparently, clear blue skies. Because if you, you know, if you go out at night, you can see the particulate everywhere. Well, you can't. You can barely see the stars now unless they're directly above you. And um, and there's huge auras, like rainbow auras, around the uh, lampshades now. So you know, you you can see the particulate if you know what you're looking for. But certainly, we had these. Uh, blue, blue skies over that, that period. That particular week, wasn't it? It was quite yes. extraordinary. For a whole week, you suddenly saw all the stars and and mm. that pulsing in the air stopped and, and you know, that I get from the radio frequency. And um, there was no, hardly any quakes at all for, for that week. And yet it was the time that, uh, on the natural order of things, because of the high amount of sun stops, sunspots and um, moon gravitational pull that, that there have been more quakes occurring at those times. Mm, it was very mm. interesting. Yeah. It was interesting times, and I'm, you know, I'm and I'm pleased to see things settled. But of course, we're we're shaking again, aren't we? We've had a couple of quakes up in the uh, Tauranga area, where the uh, ship has flipped up there. Uh, Rena is leaking oil into the bay there but anyway uh, I'm digressing and we'll get to that a no, little later. No it's quite extraordinary that quake really uh, that coinciding at the same time because um, experts are actually saying that huge container ship should never ever have landed up on that very well marked reef and mm. it's sort of in broad daylight and, and um, the oil spill that's coming off it is just going to add to all the other environmental disasters we've had and nobody seems to be doing about clearing it up at the moment or getting the containers off or getting the oil off and bad weather's predicted, so it be, could be very bad for Tauranga, which is a beautiful area, particularly in the summer, a lot of tourists go there. Well, yes, it's not just about the tourists, though. I mean, my mind is oh, on the agree. ecosystem, totally you know, the, the, the marine life that, that is in and around there. And Penny, there was another quake this morning mm. uh, in the same, a similar area, and um, it was a 5.2 off the coast really? there. Yes. Off the coast, right. Yeah, Tikaha, 10 kilometres yeah. southwest of Tikaha. And it, that one was at a depth of 50 kilometres deep. Now, one of the the members on the contrail this morning mentioned that it is very interesting that that ship was actually three miles off course, which, you know, raises some, some questions all in itself, doesn't it? And... Uh, well, he he also mentioned, and this is just you know food for for thought while we're talking about uh, the subject. He mentioned that the ship was three miles off course. All right, now even our boats have GPS units. <laughs> um, the port was to be extended in Tauranga. All right, where the ship registered it is one of the poorest countries on the planet, and he says corruption. You bet. Now, go back a couple of weeks ago to the radio show, which was your radio show about uh, electromagnetic frequencies, Penny. Mm. And uh, he's suggesting that Christchurch could become a possible base, a port for these large oil and minerals. So people he in Tarana won't... He suggested that as well. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Oh, that's exactly what I'm coming up with. That the um, or because the the Pacific, the Pegasus Bay area, which has been so badly affected by the quake, is actually the only area with a decent sized southerly shelter along that very treacherous eastern coast, which faces straight to the Antarctic. Um, it's the only area they can actually get southerly shelter, and these oil rigs are enormous. So I think that's probably is that's the impression I'm getting of what the plan is. Apparently, they're building quite a lot of pipelines here in Christchurch at the moment. The Andarco oil ship, uh, the Aquila, was actually given um, permission to sonar test two hours after the Christchurch earthquake when the people were being pulled dead out of the building. Um, they've given them permission to actually do sonar and explosive testing in the Canterbury area when we are very seismically active, mm. which is just shocking. But they won't actually, what I would really have liked to have known is at the time they were predicting this big earthquake, which didn't happen with the tidal wave, was whether, where the sonar ship was and whether it also had stopped operating at that time because since it has been testing, we've had 2,000 earthquakes. So, and, uh, and this is what's been very interesting to me, Penny. I, I uh, saw the maps of the uh, suggested mine mineral and I was... Thoroughly shocked now. Where this they've given the permits for, where the permits have gone for. Absolutely in shock. I have spent the last two days with my head in my hands. I now understand what has been going on around here. I now know why that fog that never moves, that sits on the horizon, has been there for two years. This is largely what this has all been about here in New Zealand. I you know, totally surra- agree with you. They're trying and- to affect the economy. They want to, to do the fracking, the minerals, where they've actually done all those permits. If people who are interested actually want to have a look at permitted sites, they're all along the foothills, which is actually where our clean water comes off the, the mountains. And that is the water that will be very badly affected by the chemicals from fracking. And I just don't think people actually realise what the government has done to us. It's quite absolutely appalling. And the other thing that's even more shocking is with this oil leak from the arena at the moment is quite minor in comparison to what we looked at with Deepwater Horizon. Now, Andarco, who are the Texan firm that have been given permission to do this phone testing and oil permits to drill in Canterbury, were, as I said before, they were part of the Deepwater Horizon uh, Group, and the reporter has just written a very interesting article about it. She says that the, the minister has told her they do not have to place a bond. So they wouldn't pay up for the Deepwater Horizon damage that they were involved in, and there's no obligation, no legal obligation, that if they cause the same effect out here in Canterbury Basin, that they don't have to pay up here. Yes, so the, the um, press article, this is the one you're referring to, said that yes. two hours after the February 22nd quake, the one that killed 181 people yeah. in Christchurch, yeah. uh, the government ministers had signed permits for Andaco to use sonar and explosives to protect, uh, to prospect Pros- for oil off Christchurch at that time. You know, they, they, Two hours afterwards. I mean, you sort of stop and think, you know, this, this, what Tesla said was that in the right conditions you could make earthquakes and that, that threat of the earthquakes could u- be used to coerce governments to do what they wanted. Well, <laughs> was the Christchurch earthquake the warning to them that if they didn't actually sign these permits within two hours, they were going to go and do the same thing to Wellington, you know? Well, now there's know. some... There's some food for thought. That's that's uh, <laughs> too much that's food for thought. <laughs> interesting yeah. thought there, Penny. So um, it's very strange that the government minister should extend the Texan company's sonar explosive permits at the same time that people were dying in the quake. Now you referred last week um, to the pioneer, well Tesla. That's what we were um, talking about a minute ago. Yeah, years. Yeah, and, I'm, yeah. and I'm just saying it could be exactly the same thing. You know, yeah, he set yeah. off a quake in New York. He made it his own man-made quake in New York City using vibrational equipment, and it shattered hundreds of windows. Yes, and he, um, he claimed that if you actually focus the frequencies deep into the earth, they could resonate and multiply to such an extent that quakes could be made to occur on the fault lines. So and it's he, possible he, that we were bullied. Okay, Penny, so mineral prospectors sensitive search equipment would allow them to know where seismically sensitive areas exist. Yes, and 30 years ago, it was more than 30 years ago, New Zealand was done over with a tooth comb by these um, mineral prospectors. 
and they have very, very sensitive equipment. And it was discovered at that time we had more oil than in the North Sea and huge mineral deposits, which make us very attractive to mineral and oil extraction companies. But they would also have worked out exactly where the seismically sensitive areas are. This would mean pros- prospectors would know to avoid using sonar equipment and or explosives to avoid where fault lines exist. You would think so, but the recent sonar explosive testing permits include known areas of potentially very active fault lines all along um, the uh, Southern Alps and actually offshore. And to increase operations that they have, you know, that to, to, to make do all this work when Canterbury at the moment is, is just rocking what do they call it? Old Bucky. It's so says seismically active creates the question that um, the oil mineral um, corporations might think it's in the best interest, their best interest, to trigger off an oil spill which damages our environment so badly that our tourist and fishing industry is totally destroyed. And that mm. would mean then that um, we would then be completely dependent on, on our economy, on oil and minerals. This New Zealand... Well, the container ship, which has just hit the very well-marked reef off the Tauranga coast and is leaking gallons of oil, which environmentalists fear would affect wildlife fishing. And, of course, the tourism, because the people go to see the wildlife. It's very popular with tourists in the summer. Absolutely. I can see what you mean about the effect on the Tauranga economy um, from that oil leaking incident. What's concerning me is the devastation to the fish and wildlife for more than 250 miles, which was spilled you know, across deep water horizon. We're, we're seeing a mini version of that here. Goodbye, That's Canterbury right. fishing industry. Goodbye to tourism and goodbye to our clean green image overseas, which is a load of polycock anyway. I'm sorry to say it that way, Penny. Uh, we understand that they are also using Corexit 9500 to clean up the oil mess now we'll go into that one a bit later devastating yes you mentioned that before um what is very interesting is greenpeace have been campaigning against petrobas who who are the brazilian company that were going to do their um oil drilling actually up in that area and greenpeace actually reported that new zealand did not have the ability to cope with a big oil spill well, it's certainly showing that we don't have the ability to, to cope with um, the small oil spill we're getting from the ship. I mean, when I say it's a small one, it's probably not a small one, but it's a small one in comparison to Deepwater Horizon and also in comparison to the potential that we could have down here um, if it triggered off a quake with the oil. Um, because, you know, when, when um, if our economy is, is absolutely wrecked, we've got lots of environmentalists like you and I who are out there trying our best, you know, to to have some controls on this industry, the fracking and, you know, whole environmental issues not to be raped by the corporations. But we, we just, if, if the whole economy is devastated with what they're actually doing, well, we don't have much show, do we? No, we don't. Of course, reading in the paper a few days ago that mineral extraction permits have now been given by the national government for many areas in New Zealand. What does this mean for us? Uh, the, you know, viewing the maps was just extraordinary to me. I've actually been quite down about this for days. I agree with you. I think it's just shocking because I saw the areas where I went to a Green Party meeting uh, just the other day and um, I saw the areas where the permits were actually extended out to and I also saw, which a lot of Americans have probably seen as well, is the uh, tar sands uh, work they've been doing up in Canada and the, the effect on the whole area is just absolutely shocking. You know, just what we're actually seeing with the people at Deepwater Horizon in that area who are who are campaigning vigorously to stop them putting oil pipelines across their land, and they're now sort of much more aware of what the potential environmental risk is with these oil companies. That at Deepwater down in that and down in Mexico Bay are doing that. It's anywhere that's fracking, Penny. Well, I heard, yeah, where the methane is, they are, yeah. There's an election occurring very soon in New Zealand. Do you think it? Um, do you have any idea? It- of each party policy with regard to the dangers of fracking? Well, because I'm very concerned about the fracking and what the potential harm is, and they're trying to sort of cover it all up and, you know, make it a non-issue, I wrote to the three main New Zealand parties after I saw the, the videos that people are sending or posting on the fracking dangers that are happening in their areas overseas. 
And I saw some videos where Australian landowners were suffering dreadfully because of the fracking effects and the water so damaged it could not be consumed by people or animals. And I rang up when I wrote to the Labour Party and they replied that they had issued a memorandum in 2010 